This video aims to explain how you can connect Paddle events to WordPress while creating a WordPress user and enrolling that newly created user into a Tutor LMS course. To do that, you need exactly three things. First of all, the Tutor LMS plugin. Secondly, WP Webhooks Pro, which is our automation plugin, as well as an account on Paddle. Before we dive into it, make sure all of these two plugins are active and installed, as well as your online course is set up and your Paddle account is usable. To get started, the first thing we are going to do is we head into Paddle, we go to Developer Tools Events, and there you will see Webhook Simulator. And this is what you're going to open. This is what we need in a moment, as we are going to use those triggers, and specifically in our case, the payment success trigger, to trigger the creation of a user, along with enrolling this specific user into the Tutor LMS course. To actually create the workflow, we head first of all into WP Webhooks Pro using the settings link. And within here, you first of course have to activate your license key. And once this is done, you can head over to integrations because we first of all need to install certain integrations. The first one you need is the Webhooks integration, which is the one we use in combination with Paddle and their specific Webhook setup. Secondly, you also need to have the WordPress integration, since this is the one we use to actually create or update the user. And another one that we can use is the WP Webhooks formatter, which is interesting just because of the way the Paddle Webhooks are designed, but more to that later. Lastly, you can search for Tutor LMS and install the Tutor LMS extension. After you've done all of them, you can head into Automations Flows and create your very first automation. For that, you just click on the Create Flow button and you name your flow. In our case, we name it Paddle to Tutor LMS. Once you click Create or hit Enter, the specific flow is created, which you will see here, and you can edit it or just click on the title, which does exactly the same thing. Within the flow, the first thing we need to do is, of course, to select a trigger, and our trigger will be that whenever a payment happens within Paddle, we want to register that specific payment as a trigger and do certain actions afterwards. So first of all, we head into select a trigger, we select webhooks, and from within the dropdown here, we select HTTP request received, which basically means that an incoming request, um, what basically the one from Paddle is, uh, is received along with all of the data, and then we do something else. So we click continue, and now you will see that here is a dynamically generated URL based on your specific website. So you can copy that one. And for testing purposes, we can enter it here. Just to make sure, now we have been added to, uh, we had it to developer tools and events. So if you are testing it, you can use the webhook simulator. Otherwise, you can just add the real webhook here. And it will work the exact same way. For now, we head back into the webhook simulator and we add our test URL here. And now you can see, this is basically what we see for the payment success trigger. And you can see your customer name, you can see an email, and for the data like the quantity, the product that was purchased, etc., etc. For now, to make it more convenient, we, we name it John Doe, maybe, and the email exactly the same. Next of all, we first click on call webhook, just to make sure it works. While clicking on that, what it basically does is it sends the data or that specific request that usually happens when a payment uh, was successful to WP Webhooks, which we then in return reg register and we track the data and use it along in the next steps. Since we already have the URL now, we can just continue and save the fields since we don't need any other of the customizations. And within the test trigger step, we can now use the data that we actually send using the developer tool. To do that, you go in here and click in the dropdown, the get log data functionality, and you will see that we created one specific log, which is exactly the log based on what Paddle sent us. And once you selected it, you can see within here, we have all of our data. We have the customer name, which is John Doe, as well as the email John Doe at example.org. Once that is all done, you can just click on finish trigger, which basically prepares all of the data for the next action steps that we haven't set up yet. So far, what our setup does is that we already allow now Paddle to basically send data to WP Webhooks to do something within the plugin. Now to actually do something, 
and in our case, create a user, because this is the first thing we would like to do. We click on Add an Action, and we select the WordPress integration, along with the Update User action. We have basically both. We also have the Create User action, which allows you to create a user. But since we also want to update the user in case it already exists, we are going to use the Update User action, because it allows us to also create it, as I said in case it doesn't exist. Once selected, we click again continue, and now it's asking us for the user ID, which we don't have since the user doesn't exist, so we just leave it empty. But what we have is we have the user email. So once you click in it, you will see a dynamic dropdown, which contains the response data, so everything basically we received for the trigger and for the upcoming actions. And in our case, it's here the webhooks action, uh, the webhook trigger, so we can just click on it and we can search for email because this is what we would like. And you can see John Doe at example.org, which is exactly what we send over here. right? So we can select that as a dynamic tag and you can see, boom, it appears here, which means the user email will be set to whatever the webhook from Paddle actually sent to us. Now we don't have the first name of it exactly and we don't have the last name because what we have is we have one string that contains both so if you stay until the end of the tutorial, I'll show you how you can actually separate both of them and use them as a first name and last name. But for now, what we are going to do, we skip that and we just add the display name, searching for name, expanding this one and you can see customer name. So we select it, which means this will be the name that is actually displayed within the WordPress user that will be created. Since we don't want anything else, but we want to create the user if it doesn't exist, we set this create if none to yes, which basically makes sure that the user actually gets created in case we cannot find an already existing user based on the email that was entered from the dynamic tag. Once you did all of these steps, you can just continue and save the field. And now we have the possibility to, to test the step as well. And in our case, we want to use fire webhook action. So we want to make sure that everything works. So we really fire a real request with the data that we just set up. So once you selected it, you click fire action and you can see some response that looks similar to this one, which tells us that the user was successfully created. We have a user ID and we have the user email as well as the user password in the encrypted format. We basically have everything here that we need and we click on finish action, which makes sure that this data will be available in our next step. Now we also click on add action since we want to enroll this newly created user into a tutor LMS course. So we click Add Action, we select the Tutor LMS integration, and within here, we select the Enroll User Action. After you click Continue, you can select the user, and in our case, it's the user ID. So you just click on the WordPress on the second step, which is in our case, the action. When you scroll down a little bit, you will find the user ID. You can also search for it and just select it. And we also need to have the course ID. Since I don't have the course ID here, but I created a course, I will just head over to Tutor LMS and I will click on the actual course. And in the URL, you can see it is the ID 10. So we copy this specific ID, we head back into our actual flow and inside of the course ID, we add the number. Finally, you can click on continue and save fields, which basically sets up all of this data as well. And now we can fire the webhook action again to make sure that we actually can enroll the user. And this worked as well. So we have the courses and it was assigned to the course 10 in our case, which means we can finish this action as well. And that's basically it for the very basic flow. So now we already allow Paddle to send data on the developer step. So whenever we basically send the specific um, webhook, it will create a user and enroll this user within WordPress. To actually show you that it already worked based on the data we used now in the testing step, I'm going ahead and save this one and I head into the users and you can see we have the John Doe example.org here and we don't have a name since we didn't set it up but we have the display name available here, John Doe. This is basically the one that we set up now. And once we head into Tutor LMS and students, you can also see that John Doe was enrolled within our course. So this basically worked just about fine. And to actually demonstrate you how this whole thing works with a custom name, so basically separating the first name and the last name, we have a couple of ways. In our case, I will demonstrate it using the WP Webhooks formatter and the explode function, 
which basically allows us to separate the first name and the last name into a JSON, which makes it accessible in the update user step. First of all, we click on the add action between the trigger and the actual updating the user or creating the user, and we select the WP Webhooks formatter. And within here, we are searching for explode, and we select the explode JSON, we click continue, and now we have to add the value that we actually want to separate. And in our case, it is the display name. So I'll search for name, I'll select the customer name, and the separator is a space. So everything we do in here is we just add one space. And that's really it. So after clicking continue and save fields, we can again try the step by clicking on or by selecting fire webhook actions. We fire it. And within here, you can see now that the first name and the last name are separated. I click on finish action. And now we can head into the update user and the action settings. And now we are also able to fill in the first name and second name steps. So you can see that the second step, the formatter is now also available. We head into it, we select John since it's the first name and the last name, which is Doe. So once those are selected, we can just continue and say fields. In our case, I don't need to test it again because I already know it works. So what, it, what I do is I load the static data, which is basically the default data that we just um, provide by our plugin, which might look different to yours, but it doesn't matter much since we already set up the flow. So we finish the action, and finally we activate it. So once it is activated, the whole process basically works, and to demonstrate it to you, I will head back into Paddle, and now to actually showcase it, we rename it to um, test user, for example. So we have, uh, let's call it max user, so we know that it's actually a first name and, a, and basically a last name. We do the same thing for the email, max user at your domain.org. And when I send this data now, we'll basically create a user with an email max user at your domain.org along with a max user name. So we just click call webhook, which now basically causes the whole flow to run and we instantly will see after refreshing this page that there is a new user called Max User. Now you can also see the name because we actually added it as first name and last name along with the email address. And when you head inside of Tutor LMS and the students, you will also be able to see the new newly enrolled user. Lastly, a little bonus that I would like to add, since it's basically possible for the users to set something like the custom values here, the job title, the profile bio, and the profile photo. If you would like to add those as well within the automation, this works as well, since those fields are usually post user meta fields, which are saved in a table within the user meta inside of WordPress. And everything we need to do is we first of all need to head back into our workflow and to the update user action. We go to action settings, and within the action settings, once you scroll down a little bit, you will see the possibility to add an update meta. So we, of course, first of all, need to add an item. And now we need to know the meta key, like the key that is used within the database to actually save this data. This might be a bit tricky if you are not familiar with WordPress. But there are, for example, plugins available that display user meta keys within the actual user or as well within the post, etc. So in our case, I don't need to do this because I know that um, Tutor, for example, saves these fields within their source code. So what I do is I click inside of that field, I click inspect, and within here I see inside of the name it's underscore tutor underscore profile underscore job underscore title. So I double click it, I copy it, I head back into our flow, and I can add it here. And now we can say, for example, demo title, and I do the exact same thing for the for the profile bio. In this case, I click on profile bio. And I will just head one layer down, which is a little more complicated since it's a WSWIC field, which basically means it's an, an, a visually editable field. So I know that the key in here is underscore tutor underscore profile underscore bio. Usually, as mentioned, you don't need to search them in the, in the, show, in the code, but you will be able to use a plugin, for example, to display these values within the user profile or you can also head into your PHP My Admin and see what it was actually saved under the user ID for in this case. So I head back into the flow, I also add the bio, and I'll just add a short description. And once I save that, 
and I save this specific, or I, I try the action again with a webhook action just to make sure it really works. We can see we updated the user ID 3, which in our case is not this one, but it's this user. We head into it and we scroll down and you see demo title and this is the description this was set. This was set for the user 3 because our whole flow was configured for the user 3, john.do at example.org. So whenever you basically set these values to whatever you would like or you would like to save data that actually came from, from Paddle, you can select it here as well and will be saved within the job title or in the description. That's it so far for setting up this whole scenario. You can do this as well for all of the other endpoints that Paddle offers, depending on what you actually need. If you are using that whole setup inside of the live system, so you basically add the, your, the receiving URLs here, you can basically also accept multiple of these kind of values on the webhook, and then you can set up conditionals within the trigger, for example, like here. You can set up a conditional that makes sure that the, like it says here, run if all of the following conditions are met, which means we want to make sure this only runs when, for example, the payment was successful. So we can go in here, we click, click on the webhooks, and within here we'll see alert name, payment equals succeeded, and we can check that against it. Which basically means whenever the alert name is payment succeeded, which makes sure that within the paddle events, it is only the successful payment, then we are running this flow and it will be actually um, triggered. That's it for now. If you have any further questions, feel always free to text us. We are happy to help.